Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you all for being here. We're really excited to have you here. Please continue eating the luscious breakfast that's in front of you. Don't stop because it's too good to leave there. I want to welcome you to the first and hopefully many annual breakfasts of conservation champions hosted by the Michigan League of Conservation Voters. I'm Patty Burkhals, the West Michigan Director for the League of Conservation Voters. And be, on behalf of our staff, our board of directors, many of whom are in the room today, we thank you for joining us this morning. The Michigan League of Conservation Voters is the leading nonpartisan political voice for Michigan's land, air, and water. Above all, we believe that who we elect matters. We use a pragmatic, steadfast, nonpartisan lens to work daily to protect our extraordinary Great Lakes, our sand dunes, our shorelines, and all the wonderful natural resources that define Michigan. This morning, we are here to celebrate the leaders in our region who work to ensure our most treasured natural resources and make sure they're here for the future generations who come after us. Before we begin, I would like to especially thank our sponsors who made this event possible. Thank you, thank you to Arman Omadian for underwriting, thank you, the, the delicious breakfast, we all agreed, at our tables, and to AT&T for headlining our superior sponsorship this year, and so, to so many of the wonderful businesses and organizations, and their names are there, who decided to support us and help us make this first annual Breakfast of Champions a great event. I would also like to recognize current and former elected officials who are in attendance with us. We have the Honorable Joe Hoffman, former state representative for the 90th House District, and if you would stand and then hold your, you can hold your applause until the end. Um, the Honorable George Hartrell, our mayor of Grand Rapids, the Honorable Mark Heisinga, Mayor of Walker. The Honorable Rosalind Bliss, Commissioner for Kent County. And the Honorable Dave... Sorry, I didn't catch that error here, Rosalind. Thank you for, co co or for correcting me. And the Honorable Dave Bukowski. Would you all now please stand? Thank you. We also have a very strong showing of Michigan League of Conservation Voters and the Michigan League of Conservation Voters Education Fund board members in the room with us this morning. I'm going to thank them, and I know many of you have already had a chance to talk with them. We have Elizabeth Welch, our board chair, who you will be hearing from in a few minutes, Bill Farr, Bob Elavel, Rob Sisson, Phil Roos, and Julie Meddy Bennett here with us this morning. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge our steering committee who made this inaugural event possible and worked so hard to help us be successful. Melissa Anderson, Burt Blakey, Bob Elavel, Bill Farr, Mayor George Hartwell, John Hunting, Commissioner Ruth Kelly, David Legrand, Matt McLogan, and again, Elizabeth Welch. And now, to begin our program this morning, I would like to introduce the board chair of the Michigan League of Conservation Voters, Elizabeth Welch. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for coming out bright and early. Um, I know sometimes people have to get arrange kids off to school and different events, so I get it. Um, I want to do a quick shout out to a couple more electeds in the room, because I'm a fellow school board member. Um, Wendy Falb and David Legrand are also here from Grand Rapids Public Schools, so I have to, <laughs> so, we're kind of the low men on the totem pole when it comes to elected office, but believe me, we work just as hard, so. Um, 
Thank you again, Patty, um, and again, everyone, for joining us this morning. I actually have the pleasure of introducing truly a lifelong public servant to our great state and conservation champion, Bill Rustum. I can say when the initial group met to brainstorm over ideas on speakers and what this event would look like, our first one in Grand Rapids, um, when Bill's name came up, there was a resounding support that, yes, we have to get Bill. So we are indeed so pleased that he agreed to be here this morning. First of all, I want to just give you a little background on Bill. I know many of you in the room are so familiar with his amazing work, but for those of you who aren't, I'm going to give you the quick primer. Uh, Bill got his start in public service early. He was an intern in Governor Milliken's administration. And then he quickly assumed leadership roles and adopted the protection of our most pristine natural resources, fisheries, and wildlife as priority issues. Indeed, if there's ever someone who champions conservation, it is Bill. His leadership developed um, our state's landmark bottle bill, something we all just don't think is that big a deal, and many other states have followed suit, but we were indeed the leader on that issue in the nation. And that, of course, expanded recycling across the state. He led the campaign to create Michigan's unique and invaluable natural resources trust fund, which has provided more than a billion dollars to purchase and improve parks and natural areas across the state. Obviously, areas that we all enjoy tremendously to this day and want to continue in, uh, enjoying in the future. He is a champion for pragmatic policies that protect the outdoors, that define our state, the places you see on Pure Michigan billboards and in ads, from the Great Lakes to the local parks where our children go to play. It is my true honor to welcome a true conservation champion, Bill Rustum, to deliver our keynote this morning. Thank you. Good morning. That wasn't very good. One more time. Good morning. All right. Here we are in Grand Rapids. I'm, I see so many of my friends around here <laughs> all over the place. And for those of you who don't know, I was talking to Bert Blakey earlier. Uh, he and I both uh, share something. We both graduated from the same high school in Frankenmuth. <laughs> We're eagles. We're eagles together. Uh, so I, it's a pleasure for me to be here. And uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I retired last year from Governor Snyder's office. I, this, that was my second stint in a governor's office. I worked for Governor Milliken for 12 years uh, when he was, uh, was governor of Michigan. And, and I, so I had the opportunity to be involved in a number of issues, see a number of tough issues. There's one tough issue I just got to raise before I start my talk, and that is today. Make sure you vote today and vote yes. Please vote yes today on Proposal 1. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it is our one shot at, at, at fixing our roads in Michigan, which are abysmal, are abysmal, and they are driving businesses and jobs away from this state. They have got to be fixed. They've got to be fixed. So please make sure you vote today, and please vote yes on Proposal 1. Uh, I, you know, I got to thank the Michigan League of Conservation Voters for bringing us all together this morning. Lisa. You've done a w wonderful job, and the rest of your team, in, in, in building this organization in Michigan. I think I was on the original board for the, for the LCV, the original board, right? Back when it was just starting in Michigan. And uh, it, has, uh, it has grown uh, because of the executive leadership of Lisa and others, and has been very successful. And it's a pleasure to, to be here to, to, to address uh, this gathering, this impressive gathering of people from Grand Rapids. You know, I, I always say that the, the one, if you want to talk about conservation and the environment and you want to have a receptive audience, go to Grand Rapids. And uh, I'm proud of the, this city. I'm proud of the, 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 uh, the leadership that this city has played in, in conservation all across the state. We mentioned the bottle bill. I can tell you, I remember that campaign back in 1976, long time ago. But I took a leave from Governor Milliken's office, went to work for Michigan United Conservation Clubs for a year to get that campaign. To, the, the, the ballot proposal. It was a ballot proposal at the time to get that passed. And uh, the Grand Rapids area was the leader in the state in terms of support, both financially and in voting for that bottle bill, which is really cleaned up, of course, as all of us know, our, our streets, our roads, our waterways, uh, it, remarkably. Um, I am also want to just recognize Patty Burkholz. Where's Patty again? Where's she sitting? Uh, she reminded me. I, I wore purple in honor of Patty today. Uh, 
she is, she and Joe Hobman, who's over here, where's Joe? You know, they are examples of why we need to fix term limits. They should still be in the legislature, both of them. Both of them should still be in the legislature. So as, you know, beyond the conservation uh, uh, arena, as you look forward to things that have to be done in Michigan, that is one that we've got to fix. We have got to fix term limits. It, the, the system is not working the way it is today. It's too short. We have the shortest period uh, that a legislator can serve of any state in the country, and it doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. I've watched it. I know what it was like before. I know what it's like now. It doesn't work. Six years is simply too short. Um, the LCV is doing remarkable work from Lansing all the way to Washington, D.C., and as well as, as locally. Uh, today we're, we're here to honor some of uh, West Michigan's greatest conservation champions, one Democrat, one Republican, and Carol Parseka. Carol, would you stand? She's an emerging environmental champion, and we need them. So let's <laughs> thank Carol. You know, that, that's the thing about conservation. It's not about your age. It's not about your party. Protecting our air, our land, and our water is not a generational issue. It's not a partisan issue. It's an issue for all of us. You know, we in Michigan are defined by the Great Lakes. Just look at a map. We are defined by the Great Lakes. And our lakes bring us all together. They're part of our culture. It doesn't matter whether you spend your time on one of our be beautiful beaches just sunning yourself or swimming or boating or fishing, which I like to do. Um, our outdoor heritage is a part of our way of life, and it defines what Michigan is. It's our moral obligation to protect our natural resources for our kids and theirs so that they have the opportu opportunity to enjoy what we have. Conservation and energy policy transcend and should always transcend political parties. And protecting our air, our land, and our lakes should be something that everyone in all parties can agree on. Republicans, Democrats, independents, the public sector, the private sector, all of us. Speaking of, of public-private partnerships, uh, the city of Grand Rapids, as I mentioned earlier, is, and the local business community here have uh, led by support. They deserve both our praise and our support. Last week, Mayor Hartwell, and not my favorite mayor in Michigan, by the way, <laughs> announced Grand Rapids has been named an emerging 2020 district by Architecture 2030, an effort to reduce energy use in the downtown area. 2030 districts are unique public-private partnerships that bring together property owners and managers with local governments, with businesses, community stakeholders, through common goals of reducing energy waste, water use, and transportation emissions in urban settings. There are a whole host of partners involved in this effort that include the U.S. Green Building Council, West Michigan uh, uh, Sustainable Business Forum, and, and some real champions. and, and Grand Rapids is loaded with business champions from the private sector, including, is it Bazzani Building Company, Consumers Energy, Meyer, Progressive, uh, AE, Steelcase, Spectrum Health, Rockford Construction, Veolia Energy, and countless others, all of whom are critical to this effort. The designation of Grand Rapids as an emerging 2030 district has been an ongoing effort led by the private sector led by the private sector and building on local leadership and commitment to, sustain, uh, to sustainability. And it positions Grand Rapids to once again lead by example, standing out as a shining example across the nation. The city of Grand Rapids has reduced its electricity use by more than 10% since 2006. Even more impressive, the city set a goal of getting 100% of its electricity from renewable so uh, sources by 2020, and it's well on its way, getting 25% of its electricity from renewable sources today. What 
many of you may not know is that on the EPA's ranking of top local governments using green power, Grand Rapids is ranked 17th in the entire nation. 17th in the entire nation. That's impressive. And much of the work in getting there is due to Mayor Hartwell. Uh, his leadership will be sorely missed. And again, I say, I wish we didn't have term limits. <laughs> but I'm confident that both the public and the private sectors in Grand Rapids will continue uh, to make certain that the progress that has been started uh, continues into the future. And you know, I, I think the state of Michigan and frankly the nation could learn a lot from Grand Rapids, thanks to Mayor Hartwell and the outstanding business community here in West Michigan. One of the most impressive things about West Michigan's progress on reducing pollution and protecting our air, our water, and our natural resources is leadership from the private sector. The private sector always plays a key role here. Groups like the West Michigan Sustainable Business Forum, Forum are driving collaboration and innovation. And leaders like uh, Carol Parseka, who we just met, and Dan Schoonmaker are promoting business practices that demonstrate the environmental stewardship economic vitality and social responsibility that are necessary to move us forward. So in addition to strong leadership at the local level and from the private sector, people in Grand Rapids are lucky to have hard-working community leaders and elected officials representing them in Lansing. And that's who we're here to recognize today. Representative Rob Verhulen and Representative Winnie Banks are true champions of Michigan's air, land, and water. They epitomize what conservation is all about. I can go back years ago. I, you, you, many of you in the room won't recognize these names, but two of my heroes uh, back when I worked for Governor Milliken were Tom Anderson and Warren Gomer. And uh, Warren Gomer was an interesting story. He served in the legislature for a long, long time. Again, uh, another example of why we don't need term limits. But he once told me, he said, you know, people get, private property rights are, are, are fine, and, and people ought to have the right to say what they can do on, the, on their land. But he said, to, he said to me, he said, you know, but that water, that water belongs to God and me. And it's the way he looked at things, that it was a common resource. And these kind of legislators are the, con are the, are the, the type that we need to make certain that Michigan continues the progress it has made. So those legislators, Rob uh, Verhulen and Representative Winnie, Winnie Branks, uh, Brinks, are, are true champions of Michigan's land, uh, air, and water. And they epitomize what conservation is all about. They're willing to work across party lines, which there's far too little of today, to do what's right. And as you probably know, energy policy is a hot topic in Michigan this year. Our highly successful clean energy policy expires at the end of this year. When it comes to moving the needle and updating clean energy policy in Michigan, Michigan League of Conservation Voters has been on the front lines. They educate their members, they talk to members of the legislature, and if need be, push them to do better. They hold meetings with decision makers and business leaders on the urgent need to increase our use of renewable energy and energy efficiency, and they hold policymakers accountable to their campaign, campaign promises to do what's right for our environment and our economy. Representatives Verhulen and Brinks are both champions on this issue, and they both understand it will take all of us working together to make something happen. They understand that clean energy policy creates jobs, sparks investment, and spins innovation in our state. And although neither of them are able to be here today because of committee meetings in Lansing, I'm glad to be part of this celebration honoring these two West Michigan leaders. Let's give them all a hand. I want to take a, just a couple moments to uh, provide an update on clean energy. 
Uh, it all started back in 2008 when Michigan's clean energy policy was passed with bipartisan support. Much of that was due to LCV's West Michigan director and former state senator, Patty Burkholz. Patty, right down here. That legislation called for Michigan to generate 10 percent of its electricity from renewable sources by 2015. Some said it couldn't be done. Well, we blew past that goal. And we're now in a position to become a national leader on clean energy if the right policies are adopted. Governor Snyder has been a, made clean energy policy a top priority over the past several years. Beginning in 2012, he asked the Michigan Public Service Commission and Michigan Energy Office to study our potential for expanding our use of clean energy and building upon our clean energy standards. He has shown true leadership on this issue, and I'm not just saying that because he was my boss for four years. Governor Snyder knows that protecting our environment isn't a partisan issue. He knows it's an economic issue as well. You know, the Greek word eco is the root word of both economics and ecology. And in Greek, eco means home, home. They have to work together to create the home that all of us need. With all kinds of legislative proposals on the table right now, it's important that all of us get involved, not just this week or next week, but now. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one other reason we must transition away from coal and toward cleaner sources of energy, and that's climate change. Climate change cannot be denied. It's been called the greatest threat to our future. All you got to do is look at the floods that devastated this city back in 2013, or the early freeze that decimated our cherries and apples the year before. Climate change is happening now, and we've got to address it. I'm going to conclude, I'm going to conclude with just a couple of quotes here. One from Gerald Ford, prominent Grand Rapids person who became president. He said, America cannot permit the excessive delays associated with the commercialization of unconventional energy technologies. New production is essential. Our national security and economic well-being depend upon our ability to act decisively on energy. He was responsible. He, Gerald Ford, was responsible for major investment in alternative energy research. He provided assistance to the states to develop their own conservation programs. I know he'd be proud of this city and the leadership of Mayor Hartwell, Representative Verhulen, and Representative Brinks. He would also be proud of the work that the LCV is doing. This is an organization that's talking, not just talking about the issues. It's an organization working to make positive change. I'd like to thank the LCV for inviting me to be part of today's celebration. And I'm going to close with this. It's just a quote from Governor Milliken uh, back when he was inducted into the Michigan Conservation Hall of Fame. And he quoted the Bible, and he said, you know, the great prophet said, what does it benefit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his soul? And he went on to say, in Michigan, our soul is not defined by steel and concrete. Rather, it's defined by the soft petals of a trillium, by the whispers of a headwater stream, by the vista of a Great Lakes shoreline, and by the wonder in children's eyes upon seeing their first bald eagle. It is that soul which Michigan must not lose. You are part of protecting that soul of Michigan, not just for us, but for our kids and theirs. Keep up the good work, Grand Rapids, and help the LCV as they move this forward. Thank you. A huge thank you to Bill Rustum. Remarkable speech, and what an honor to have you here with us today, truly. Thank you very, very much. 
Um, Bill is correct in remembering that he did play a significant role in actually founding this organization years ago. If I remember correctly, you uh, were on the board circa 2001, 2002, and actually got the organization on its feet. So thank you for that as well. Um, I'm Lisa Wozniak. I'm the executive director of the Michigan League of Conservation Voters. Very proud to be here today in the city in which I grew up. Um, it is a city in which we have made a very deep commitment. We have two base offices in the state, uh, one in Southeast Michigan and one in Grand Rapids for all the reasons you've heard about today. Um, we also have three field offices across the state in other locations. Um, before I move into the awards portion of this uh, program, uh, I would be remiss in not acknowledging one other uh, former elected official that's here with us today. I want to honor the Honorable, the Honorable Steve Pesca, who is here with us, former state representative and former ju judge. Thank you so much for being here. This morning, as Bill has pointed out, we are here to honor two amazing champions, Representatives Rob Verhulen and Representative uh, Winnie Brinks two elected officials from West Michigan who show much needed leadership in Lansing on land, air, and water issues. Just yesterday, both representatives, Verhulen and Brinks, joined Michigan LCV at a town hall pertaining to clean energy um, and did a, a, a very interesting and important job of engaging their constituents and, and members of the community in a, in a discussion very much like uh, what Bill mentioned today in terms of the importance of moving Michigan forward in the clean energy sector. It speaks volumes in this day and age to find common ground across party lines. I think we all know that, uh, especially on issues that matter so much to us, such as clean energy. It impacts our health, our community's health, our Great Lakes. Um, think about the children with, and the number of asthma cases we have in the state of Michigan. It's an issue that, that impacts so many different uh, arenas of our community. Representatives Brinks and Verhulen are public servants we can count on to understand that the quality and quantity of our state's natural resources are inherently linked to our economy and our way of life. For their leadership, as Bill pointed out, we are here today to honor them. They cannot be here with us because they are both in committee meetings in Lansing, but we do have representatives here to accept the awards on their behalf. I'd like to invite uh, Zach Sikama, staff member for Representative Verhulen, and um, Olivia Brinks, daughter of Representative Brinks, to the stage. These are small tokens, but I hope very important tokens of our deep appreciation for the leadership both that both the representatives are exhibiting and I hope will continue to exhibit in Lansing, again, where it is much, much needed. Obviously, Representative Hewlin is sorry he could not be here. We keep him very busy on purpose. He is doing the good work of the people. Um, Representative Verhulen did say something to me the other day about the league and about the league's priorities, and I think Mr. Rustum kind of alluded to it. This is not a partisan issue. This is part of our West Michigan identity. You know, for me as a fisherman, when I'm standing in the rogue, fly fishing and not catching anything, um, looking around at the trees and the environment that I'm in, is, is, it's, a very, it's a very spiritual experience for me, and we're going to work to protect that for you. And Representative Verhulen thanks you for all your work as the league. And we really enjoy meeting with you and, and kind of taking people by surprise. People come into Republican office with environmental issues and they expect one thing. Well, I've got something else to serve you, so that's perfect. Um, but we appreciate it. My mom really wanted to be here this morning, but she's in Lansing as well. Um, so on her behalf, I'll just say thank you for this award and she really appreciates your support. I now have the distinct honor to introduce an invaluable member of the Michigan League of Conservation Voters Board of Director, Directors, the Mayor of Grand Rapids, and a very dear friend of mine, George Hartwell. 
Throughout his tenure in office, Mayor Hartwell's outstanding leadership has placed Grand Rapids ahead of the curve in the state, in the nation, and frankly, in the world, on building a sustainable city that values its natural resources. <laughs> Welcome, Mayor Hartwell. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Well, thank you very much. And, and what an incredible honor it was to learn that the Michigan League of Conservation Voters uh, wanted to create a, a George Hartwell Award uh, to be presented annually at uh, this uh, meeting uh, to an emerging environmental leader here from West Michigan. Uh, you know, environmental activism, as, uh, as, as most in the room know, uh, requires a, a long view and, and the commitment uh, uh, of a lifetime to uh, working on and fighting for issues. Uh, I suppose as my own uh, Western horizon begins to loom large, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm particularly passionate about uh, nurturing and, and mentoring young environmental leaders. Uh, so it's a, a special pleasure today to present the first annual George Hartwell Award to Carol Parseka. Carol's commitment to leading on sustainability in West Michigan is homegrown. She earned her um, uh, degree in sustainable business from Aquinas College. And Carol now serves as the Assisted Living Sustainability Coordinator at Pilgrim Manor, a sustainable, faith-based retirement community here in Grand Rapids. Carol uh, spearheaded a green team of residents, uh, staff, and others at, at Pilgrim Manor, and the green team ensures that sustainability is ingrained in the day-to-day -day activities of the organization uh, by hosting ongoing educational events and developing policies to promote environmentally friendly practices. Uh, Pilgrim Manor has four times earned the recognition from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality with their Neighborhood Environmental Partnership Award. It was the first, and as far as Carol and I know, uh, still the only long-term care facility in the state of Michigan to achieve the Department of Environmental Quality's C3, that's the Clean Corporate Citizen uh, Award. Um, under Carol's leadership, Pilgrim Manor has reduced its carbon footprint, improved its energy efficiency, and accomplished what no other retirement home in Michigan had done before it, and what the regulators said would be impossible, uh, and that is an organic food recycling program. They have rain barrels, they have a porous pavement uh, parking lot, uh, and they are the pilot project in the West Michigan Take Back the Meds uh, program through the city of Grand Rapids. In addition to her role at Pilgrim Manor, Carol serves as the board president of the West Michigan Sustainable Business Forum. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let your applause signal your appreciation and serve as a source of encouragement as Carol Parseka comes forward. Thank you very much. I just want to say a few things this morning. Um, first and foremost, my reaction um, when I heard I was being honored for this award. I'm going to put this on, sorry. Um, again, it's another wow. Really? This, this, you guys are honoring me? What a, what a great honor. Um, I normally introduce speakers <laughs> and recognize others for their efforts and their contributions. And today, that's me. So it's, I'm a little bit taken aback by that. Um, I can't believe I'm here today, again, being honored by Mayor Hartwell, a man whom I've had the privilege of working with in several capacities, not only at Pilgrim Manor, but on the CSP Leadership Board. Um, he has inspired me many, many times over, including this past year at the State of the City Address. Um, and to receive an award not only from him, but named for him, again, my reaction, wow, thank you. Um, there are many avenues every day to keep the conversation alive, open, and honest. I truly believe that. There are opportunities to knock down barriers and to play a part, no matter how big a flop it might be or how small the impact. 
uh, chances to impact life in Michigan, the place that we call home, are present every single day. There have been many times where someone sought me out for a correct policy or procedure, asked me for a solution to a problem, or just to share an idea. Uh, many times I didn't have that answer, but I was happy to try to look for it. But the best part was the conversation that came out of those questions. I wanna say thank you once again. Thank you to Pilgrim Manor for supporting me in all of the grandiose ideas that I often have. Um, to my mini fan club here today from Pilgrim Manor. To Mayor Hartwell, to the Michigan LCV, to the West Michigan Sustainable Business Forum, and obviously to all of you. I wanna walk away with a challenge. Um, I challenge you to continue to lead conversations, to stay inspired, volunteer when you can, dumpster dive if you feel the need. <laughs> it's fun, it's exciting. Um, compromise occasionally, <clears throat> write a letter of support, continue to learn because I believe that's the most important, and be that annoying little voice that just might stick because I know that I will. So thank you. Carol, congratulations. Um, I'm a member of the Sustainable Business Forum with the League, and we've gotten to know each other better and better the last three years, and she is one. She is the, now the chair of the Sustainable Business Forum, and she is one um, gutsy woman who really um, works with us and also encourages us while pressuring us to move forward. So congratulations, Carol. Well, this is the um, end, but hopefully the beginning for many of you who um, hopefully are inspired by some of what you've heard today about Michigan, about our wonderful state and our conservation ethic, to maybe take a second look at supporting and or working on some of these issues. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for joining us and for helping us celebrate conservation values that define West Michigan and the champions who are helping move us forward in our entire state. We could not have celebrated today without the support of our wonderful donors whose names have been up, our sponsors, and our Michigan League of Conservation Voters boards of, Board of Directors, and I know they're scattered about the room. They aren't just in one place. We look forward to staying in touch with you about the opportunities to get involved in our work and in the work of others on conservation issues here in Grand Rapids and of course across West Michigan. And I want to um, let you all know that we are downtown in Grand Rapids, a, a wonderful presence. We're on the mall and right across from the police station, the former police chief used to say he could keep his eye on me. Um, and I'd known him for a long time, so it was a joke. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it really was, folks. But um, we're, we're really a good physical presence right downtown. Any of you are welcome to stop in and see us uh, in one of the historic Peck buildings, which is really neat if you like historic buildings. So we're here, we're here to help, we're here to work together, we're here to hear your ideas and work with you and for you. And please, in the interest of recycling, we'd appreciate it if you drop those in the basket on your way out the door, stay and chat, have another cup of coffee, um, meet some new friends, some old friends, and have a conversation. Thank you very much and work forward, work hard on Michigan's wonderful natural resources. We want them for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you. <laughs>